Что-нибудь слышно? Да. Да, это да, слышно. Сейчас, значит, я в чат пошлю ссылку на доску. Почему вы ее посылаете? Нет, смысле, ну я могу, если кто-то еще обошлет, тем лучше. Да я вообще Вроде же не вы делаете доклад. Что? Нет, но нет, я предоставляю доску докладчику, на которую он может сделать доклад. Нет, а если докладчик хочет сделать каким то другом способом доклад, то почему вы нет? Но я вообще хотел расширить PDF. -ку. Меня слышно, кстати? Ой, лучше, лучше бы без PDF, а на доске нельзя это? А, наверное, тоже можно. Да. А ну, может, у вас есть какая-то доска, которую вы привыкли пользоваться, тогда бы вы ей могли, если хотите. А я могу то самое. А, который я привык? Не, наверное, нету. Давайте ну хорошо, посмотрим. тогда давайте. Значит, я, я, то самое, я сейчас попытаюсь доску тоже включить. Не знаю, что получится. Великолепно. Ну, великолепно, это великолепно. Написать что-нибудь можно? Зачем? Нет, ну, чтобы проверить, сможет ли докладчик написать что-нибудь. Сейчас. Сейчас я попробую. Сейчас я не знаю, вид, видно ли в чате уже прошлое сообщение. Ну вот это самое. Еще раз да, ссылка на доску. Добрый день. Нет, было не видно. Сейчас, сейчас видно. Да. Но в сущности доска будет показываться и в зуме, так что если вы просто не хотите ничего писать на ней, то можно и не это самое. Но... А что ж ты, как, почему то я не могу стереть надпись? Тут есть такая та самая. Как это может быть? Нет, это может быть кто-то написал в зуме поверх этого. А, вот теперь не видно. Добрый, добрый вечер. Добрый вечер. Тебя немножко плохо слышно, тихо. Да, сейчас будет получше. Да. А, вот они вот сейчас стало лучше. Так, ну чего, уважаемый докладчик, может что-нибудь написать? Или это действует это? Пока. А, вот очень хорошо. Если это вы пишете, то замечательно. Там есть внизу еще такая штучка вот с, типа молнии, и можно выделять ей что-то, что потом пропадает. Если мне чего-то нужно.
Так, а меня вообще слышно, кстати? Я, я да, тут слышно, слышно. Без микрофона сижу. А, все, отлично. Очень хорошо слышно, да. Я тут разговариваю просто. Да. да. Значит, ну, еще общая просьба к гражданам, если это ничему не противоречит, что, ну, чтобы докладчику было более как-то понятно, может быть, они включат камеры, чтобы испытываемое имя удовольствие или омерзение от доклада было бы непосредственно видно. Да, если кто-то заснет, то мы что-то... Да, да, чтобы тоже было ясно, что значит, надо что-то поддать жару. Вот, ну что, может быть, кто-нибудь, пока, пока все еще не, не все пришли, может быть, кто-нибудь представит докладчик, объяснит, про что будет доклад, если кто знает, и как не так вообще это самое, откроет семинар торжественный. Я думаю, Андрей это сделает. Да, хорошо, а, а Брюно еще не пришел? No, you can speak in Russian. Он заинтересовался. No, just, just the, the, rule, the rule is as, as soon as one somebody comes who cannot understand Russian, we switch to English. But if if okay, let us speak. Uh, I guess I guess from the names everyone should be able to understand Russian. But if not, tell us. Хорошо. Сегодня у нас запланирован доклад Рустама Зевгарова, который будет рассказывать про результаты, полученные в его курсовых работах. Главным образом, в предыдущей курсовой работе. Это теоремы про свойства выделяемости общей информации. Точнее, про невыделяемость общей информации. Значит, наиболее пожилые участники семинара наверняка помнят разные работы на эту тему сделанные там больше 20 лет назад. И, и, что Рустам будет рассказывать про разные технологии, которые позволяют изучать этот вопрос. Некоторые технологии нам уже довольно привычны, то есть что-то мы, мы вот видели и в прошлом веке, а некоторые технологии более новые. Но, значит, насколько я понимаю, новые технологии они не совсем заменяют старые. Они не позволяют превзойти прежние результаты. Но они позволяют получить какие-то несравнимые с, с прежними оценки. В некотором смысле лучше, а в некотором смысле хуже. О. Я думаю, что на этом вводную часть да, можно ну, значит, Желательно, конечно, чтобы это было понятно не только а, уже престарелым участникам семинара, но и тем, кто пришел в первый раз. Но, по крайней мере, чтобы можно было, значит, как-то, ну, может быть, что-то приняв на веру, но все-таки следить за содержанием доклада и что-то узнать, доказательства какие-то понять. А, может быть, можно это спросить... Это вообще Калмогоровская сложность или вот... Правильно? Да, да. А, может, может быть, тогда надо спросить у участников, кто знает, что такое Калмогоровская сложность. Да. Ну, это, это самое... Нет, то есть Калмогоровская сложность – это вещь довольно общая, все-таки достаточно известная. А вот всякие технологии с выделением общей информации – дело более тонкое. То есть Калмогоровскую сложность, с ним, ее могли бы знать и не... не престарелые участники семинара, поэтому, ну так, в общем, я думаю, что тут, тут, тут больших шансов у нас как бы начать 
с самого начала нету, потому что мы тогда ничего не... не... То есть какое-то какое знакомство, я думаю, что можно предполагать. Ну, хорошо, я думаю, что... Ну, можно... что да, попробуем да, начать. Да, давайте. А, ну, хорошо. А, ну, начинаю, наверное, с того, о каких вообще словах мы будем говорить. А, ну, и а, брать мы будем а, калмогоровскую сложность а, точек и прямых на плоскости. А, ну, что за плоскость мы имеем в виду? Это плоскости... А, ну, возьмем поле... А, сейчас, так... Могу ли я здесь писать? Да, могу. So Bruno has come, so if, if, if you can switch to English without big difficulties, this would be a, a, a favor. Okay, I'll try. Um, uh, so uh, we, uh, uh, we uh, have, uh, f let us have a field uh, uh, f of uh, 2 to the power of n elements. And uh, let's look uh, at its uh, product to itself. Uh, so uh, it shall be uh, some discrete field uh, of uh, points, uh, and uh, there will be a, a line. Uh, if we have points, we can define uh, lines also. Uh, lines are uh, uh, groups of points which uh, satisfy uh, uh, this rule. Uh, where A and B are elements uh, of uh, are points on our field. Uh, so uh, let's uh, uh, let's consider uh, x to be point. Uh, it's a bit confusing. X is a point. Is not not the one coordinate as in, in the equation. So I guess the equation can be erased now. Uh, yes. So in general, let me say while you erase it, let me say what you general a few general words. So imagine Alice has a, a line on the plane, knows a line on the plane, and Bob knows some point on this line, which is um, and so the fact that the point is on the line means that they have somehow they have some common information, some mutual information. They they share something, but it's quite difficult to explain what exactly they share how to make some material object which, which contains this. Uh, excuse me, uh, may I interfere? Yeah, Sasha, what, what you're saying, uh, okay, it's in general it's right, but uh, here is a minor technical uh, uh, difficulty. Okay, a, a point in a plane, it's a point in a plane, just a pair of coordinates, so it, it's okay. But uh, when we talk about lines, We can do it in different ways. We can talk about lines uh, in the affine plane, or we can talk about polynomials of degree one. It's not exactly the same thing because uh, polynomials of degree one, uh, uh, they do not include vertical lines. Again, it's, it's not a big deal, uh, but we, we, should just, we, we need to fix uh, the notation. I guess that uh, uh, Rustama prefers to say that lines are polynomials of degree one. So just we ignore vertical lines, this is, doesn't change much. Of degree at most one. At most one. Most ones are allowed. Uh, it, yeah, at most one. No, horizontal lines are okay. Oh, yes, uh, it, it actually doesn't uh, change uh, things because it's uh, they're just uh, to uh, there are not uh, too many lines uh, to be uh, excluded. So I believe it's just enough to set the definition and go on. Uh, so uh, let uh, x to be a point, uh, uh, y to be a line, and uh, we shall consider uh, uh, we we shall consider only such pairs of points and lines uh, where a point uh, just lies on the line. Uh, so we have line y, uh, uh, point x, uh, and uh, x will be on the line y. Uh, so uh, I I want to say that uh, if we already defined a line, uh, we uh, know uh, not too much uh, points. 
Okay, uh, if we already defined a line uh, and uh, we know that point is on the line, uh, there is already some uh, mutual information between them. Uh, so I want uh, to say that uh, we shall uh, uh, we shall consider only uh, incompressible pairs of uh, points and lines. And uh, I want to say that uh, uh, it shall uh, equal to 3n plus uh, some logarithm. Um, uh, how do we say that? Uh, uh, if we have a, uh, if we uh, choose a random uh, line on the field, uh, it uh, shall be, uh, uh, there will be two to the power of n lines. And uh, uh, if we shall uh, choose a point there, uh, we uh, will choose from, uh, uh, as, as far uh, we shall choose from two to the power of n line uh, points also. Yeah, so let, let, let me say for, 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 for those who see this the first time, so somehow to, to specify a point, we need to specify both coordinate. So uh, we need two n bits to specify a point. And also for, to specify a line, we need to specify two coefficients, which is also two n bits. But in general, uh, x and y, uh, the point is not on the line. And if we know that it's on the line, it somehow saves n bit. Because if, if we know the point, there is, there is one equation between a and b. And the lines going through this point, are there are few of them. So it's just dimension question. Uh, we have two dimensional um, set of point, two dimensional set of lights, and three dimensional set of, of um, points on the lines. So if 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 as usually people write that uh, x is is two n of y is two n and the pair has three three n. So the conditional complexity uh, to, to specify x given y and y given x, we need only n bits. So. Usually people draw a picture like this, it's X, Y, N, N, and N. It's a symbolic representation of uh, bits needed to specify, information needed to specify X, Y. Um, can Yes, uh, it's like this. And uh, we uh, also uh, have uh, Z sometimes, and uh, uh, which uh, uh, which we use as mutual information. So the diagrams there will look something like uh, uh, something like this. And uh, uh, we, we shall think uh, that uh, Z must be something like zero. Uh, X and Y will have something like N and N. And uh, if mutual information is N, uh, so we will hope that uh, z uh, must uh, that must be uh, over here and uh, okay i'm sorry uh, yeah uh, uh, z must be over there and we hope that there and there will be zeros actually uh, it, it will not be true for this particular case but uh, this is uh, the case of the uh, best uh, uh, deducibility of mutual information. Uh, we, we shall prove that uh, it's uh, not uh, possible here. Uh, yeah, so, so again, again, oh, it, it, just just for, for, for those who have seen this picture in the first time, so X and Y are line and, and point and line, and Z is any other string. And then for every three strings, we can write uh, a picture like this independent of whether there are lines or what. So, so for example, and th there is a symbolic picture. So for example, this part somehow represents uh, what is needed to specify Y given X, Z. And, and this part is specify something which is needed to give Z given X, Y. Uh, and, and, and the sum of all these parts is the common, is the, the, the pair information in the pair YZ, uh, in J oops, it doesn't want to write to okay. No, it doesn't like me. So it's, it's, it's a pair YZ. 
And this, this picture can be done for, for, for any three strings, but now we want very specific picture. We want that to Z, Z more or less be de determined by X and by Y uh, and uh, contain somehow the common information of X and Y. Uh, yes, it's like this. And, uh, um, and now I want uh, to uh, write a theorem which uh, uh, formulates uh, in existence of uh, such uh, Z. So I, I think we better go to the next slide here. Okay. Page, page two, you can. No. Yes. Um, yes, uh, yes, you see this. Uh, so uh, at, at, at first to uh, not uh, have problems with uh, computability functions, uh, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's say that uh, P is polynomial uh, and uh, uh, let's consider omega n uh, to be a set of words uh, of uh, uh, ones and zeros uh, Yeah, wait a second. Uh, I, I lost. Yes. Um, uh, yes, uh, let's uh, omega n yes. omega n uh, to be uh, words of zeros of length uh, less than uh, bn uh, x where uh, X is less than P of N. So because Kolmogorov complexity is asymptotic, we need some kind of, of, of not one isolated statement by a sequence of statements, and this is probably some technical thing. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, our first uh, theorem uh, will claim uh, that uh, for every N, for every X and Y as we defined already, and for every z uh, from omega n, uh, we shall have uh, uh, the inequality uh, where uh, z, z not uh, where z is less than the complexity of uh, z given x uh, plus uh, two complexities of uh, z given y. Uh, plus uh, some logarithm. Uh, okay, maybe I should write it also. No, I don't. So, um, uh, the, 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 this is uh, the first theorem, and uh, it, it can be proven uh, by uh, uh, using a uh, uh, formula of uh, exclusions and inclusions, and uh, uh, the, that. And the property of uh, our field uh, that uh, two lines has only one uh, point uh, of intersections. Uh, as far as I remember... Uh, Sorry, okay. Th there is something yeah. wrong with the statement because if X equals Y equals Z, then it, it is not wrong. No, no, X and Y are, are, are just line and point which have complexity 3n. Ah, okay, uh, yeah, so, yeah. So, so it's, it's only, it, it's on yeah. the previous page, so, so. Okay, so I got I, it, sorry, yeah. Related. Yeah. So no, the, the intuitive idea is that it, that if uh, mm. imagine that there is this Alice knows X, Bob knows Y, and somehow Z is something that they know in common. So Z should be determined by X. So this should be small, this part, and also this should be small. But then this implies that, that Z itself is small, so you cannot ha have anything non-trivial which is easily available to a Alice and Bob who knows X and Y. So it's impossibility to materialize the, the common information in X and Y via some Z. Uh, may, may I ask a, a historical question? Maybe not, not, not only to Rostam, but uh, to, to the old people. Uh, uh, is, it, is, is it true that uh, the, the uh, statement and uh, this the, the technique was invented by Andrei Muchnik. Uh, not, not exactly about the statement, 
but the, the, the idea that the technique of, of this graph without quadrangle was was uh, uh, suggested by by Muchnik. So uh, let me draw draw a picture to explain what is happening. So oops, so so we have a uh, kind of lines, mm -hmm. and we have points, and we have two to the n lines and two to the n points, and for every line we draw edges to all the points on this line, and and so on. And this is two to the n more or less uh, points on a line, and two to the n lines going through a point. And uh, what 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 Muchnik Muchnik used quoted not he used the fact that there are no uh, pictures so pictures like this is not possible. You cannot have a uh, quadrangle. So uh, cycle of like like size two. No cycles of with four, or, 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 no cycles or with four four edges. Yeah, yeah, four. of length four. So because this means that there are two lines and two points, and both points are on uh, both lines. So uh, this one is one of this is not possible, and this means somehow this implies uh, more or less by some combinatorial counting uh, that um, if, if we represent this graph in a different way. And we have these lines, points, and provide a point if 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 there is a, a edge. So we, we consider a, a, a table of neighbors, adjacency matrix of this graph. And so in this adjacency matrix, we don't have uh, rectangles. So this is not possible. And this means that if we take a uh, uh, actually, a, a, a combinatorial rectangle, a product of two sets here and there, then there the points of our graph are quite rare here, and this is what you meant. Uh, this is what you mentioned in, in, in inclusion exclusion technique, uh, which was uh, no. So, so this definitely goes back all to Muchnik. Uh, I didn't know it, at, at what extent, which which was the detail, but all the ideas definitely, definitely were him, his. Okay, so sorry for for his historical. Uh, okay, um, uh, I I actually believe that. Uh, 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 people understand this theorem. Uh, this is, so far, there are no more questions. Uh, uh, so uh, maybe we uh, can go to the second theorem, which uh, claims uh, something almost the same, uh, but uh, just almost. Uh, so uh, l l let uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, th this is. Uh, uh, this is uh, by the formula used by the lemma from uh, by expander mystic lemma, uh, which uh, I saw in Romashenko and uh, Gurpinar. Uh, so, uh, uh, for all n and uh, for all uh, x and y, uh, as we defined uh, previously, okay, maybe I should note it like this. And uh, uh, for all uh, z from omega n, uh, which is uh, defined above, uh, we uh, have uh, at least uh, one is true. Uh, so the first is that Kolmogorov complexity of z uh, is uh, uh, greater than n uh, plus uh, some logarithm maybe. Uh, and, um, and, uh, and uh, it's not uh, actually very interesting because uh, there are just uh, very rare cases when you say, about, you say something about mutual information in this uh, uh, place and uh, z is uh, too big. Uh, so, and the second is uh, uh, almost the same inequality. Uh, 
but uh, without uh, these uh, numbers too for uh, complexities. So we have uh, Kolmogorov complexity of Z less than uh, complexity of Z given X uh, plus uh, complexity of Z given Y uh, plus uh, some logarithm. Uh, so uh, it's uh, uh, this uh, theorem is somehow similar to the previous one, and uh, uh, yeah. So, but uh, the previous one somehow uh, prevents us for heavy, for from having z, which is um, just a full common information, which has complexity n and conditional complexity zeros. Technically speaking, this new one doesn't prevent because the first, if complexity of Z is N, then the, 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 the first part, uh, first alternative is true. But I guess that uh, uh, this is no, some so, kind so, of... it, 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 it prevents, prevents. Just uh, assume uh, uh, that uh, we can extract, we can find uh, uh, a Z of complexity N, such that it has a zero complexity conditional on x and zero conditional uh, zero complexity condition on y. Then you can take the first half of z and get. No, it maybe, maybe half is it's it's a, it's a bit too, too too much. But okay, to take ninety percent of this z. Then on the left you will have ninety uh, percent of n, and on the right you will have uh, twice ten percent of. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a contradiction. So somehow, in other words, you can say that uh, this second inequality holds with any constant larger than one. Right? I didn't get, get it, so say it again. No, no, I meant that the another way to state it is just the second inequality that you have here, but with, you know, with any constant larger than one. Then it's just true always, no? Ah, you, you mean like I mean, the constant on the right hand side. Epsilon, right? Yeah, for, for any epsilon, you know, for all large enough n, we have this inequality, which right. just directly because... improves upon the previous one. Yeah, I, sorry, I mean, I, I guess I, the problem I, I is that. I don't, I don't see how you, you get it. Why, why it's so. so, so, so... Well, you were saying that, uh, well, I can take epsilon complexity of Z if it's larger than N. And then, you know, this uh, one minus epsilon part of the complexity of Z will be bounded by this. And then the S is by N. No, but Z, but Z given X can be not small if you take arbitrary Z. Well, okay, what uh, then what you are saying that what does it prevent? It that prevents a if... full extraction of information from from x and y by z just the the, the yeah. very basic thing why cannot be extracted fully uh, let, us, let, yeah. us, let us write this argument on the next slide in full detail which because argument it's we, not we clear have... so so first of all let, let, let's erase one plus epsilon to, to avoid unnecessary things but just maybe you can say why why the first part is needed what is the 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 obvious probably obvious counterexample which shows that we need some kind of of of, of restriction like the one? So Sasha, you are saying that the net, the second theorem is not true without uh, the first condition? No, 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 no. I I would ask to say why we need the first condition in the in the second theorem. One, okay. we cannot just claim okay. the inequality like like that. Okay, and yeah. why? Uh, th th this is how uh, my proof actually, or, uh, not really mine, but uh, uh, this is how proof was uh, uh, made. Uh, so uh, this, uh, so uh, I'll, I'll show it actually, actually later, but uh, uh, just, th just there maybe is if a... you take, let's take pair of x, y in terms of z instead of z. So let, let z be the full pair of x, y. Then we have uh, here we have but then in, uh, three the inequality will be wrong. Then we yeah. have n and n. So mm -hmm. the inequality mm -hmm. will be wrong. 
So uh, we we but so we need something which which says that z is quite small. Mm -hmm. So in some region we have the, the second inequality, and this region is given by the first one, and this is needed because of this uh, possibility. Yeah. Okay. So now you are claiming that the second theorem implies the first one, right? Not, not. I am. I not. I don't know. I am not claiming this. But I, I, I was under impression that you both tried to explain why the second theorem implies the first. One. No, no, no. So, I, I say that both the theorems uh, uh, imply uh, that the full extraction is impossible, but in different ways. Ah, in the first case, we just have an inequality with which is violated immediately. And the se in the second theorem, because the, the, the inequality is, is not for always, but in some restrictions, uh, we cannot apply it directly. And we need some trick to, 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 to simplify Z a bit uh, to get a contradiction. Ah, so you were explaining why the second theorem implies that the full information is not extractable. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. If Andrei was explaining let, by let, taking let us 90 persons of this in full detail on the next page. Okay, so I can provide the next page for number three. Full detail while the information is not extractable. About 90%. Yeah. So as I understand, the full information means that Z uh, has N bits, uh, complexity N, right? And the complexity of Z given X and Y is... Yeah, the... full information is Z in, is, is N, Z given X is negligible. zero? No, zero. Everything is up to logarithm. And zero, uh -huh. Y is zero. Okay. And now now Andre Andre says that imagine this is true. Okay. Then for some z. For some z, which we can replace by the shortest program reducing z. So z is uh, something like uh, n bit string. Uh huh. Okay. And then says Andre, let's take z prime, which is ninety percent of z. Okay. And then, of course, complexity of Z prime uh, mm -hmm. will be um, 0 0.9 N. Yeah. And still complexity of Z prime given X and complexity of Z prime given Y will be, no, uh, not zero up, up, up to lo log N actually. Okay. Because you need just to, to, to get Z in full and then cut it a bit. So mm -hmm. you know, need to know uh, only only. Few. You can get constant. You cut it in ninety percent. You don't yeah. Okay, but it. we took a shortest program, so so uh, we need to know the length of the shortest. Program. Okay, but don't don't don't. Anyway, and this is of course impossible because this is in the region covered by the first theorem, and so it should be uh, actually this z prime should be bounded by by z prime given x plus the prime given y. And mm -hmm. this is blatantly violated. Uh, right. So mm -hmm. I don't know why Andre didn't like 50% of x. No, uh, I was wrong. We, it, it works with 50%. Should be work. I, I, work I, 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 I but, but so this somehow this theorem, uh, they both somehow count, cut the possible region of, of common information extraction in a bit different way. But, 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 both forbid the ah, full extraction. So the first theorem is from uh, the paper of uh, Ramashenko Gulpinar, and the second is. Uh, no, 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 no. The first Vardar. theorem is from Muchnik. Ah, from Muchnik. And I guess it should be in our book or or, or somewhere. Okay. So, and the second one is. No, I, 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 I remember the, the first one is a paper with uh, Chernov. Uh, 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 Chernov, Chernov, Muchnik, Muchnik, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, but in fact, in fact, it, I guess it's it's just the main this this result was was due to Muchnik and and rather on the road something. Yeah, so the first is is, is something well known and, and old, and uh, the improvement is the second theorem. Uh, yes, it's uh, true. Uh, uh, 
so I probably can go on. Okay. So do, do you we erase this 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 page number three, yeah? yeah. Or or you need it for something? No, I don't need it, but okay, uh, we can so let erase, leave it. Erase. Okay. We, can, we can even make nice background for you. Okay. Uh, do you now, now want to prove the theorem, yeah? Uh, I want uh, to prove it, but uh, before I want uh, to state uh, to state uh, a little uh, extension of this uh, theorem, and uh, then prove uh, prove the non extended version, uh, uh, saying what we can change to uh, make such extension. Okay, but you want to state the extension first. Okay, that's a bit a bit strange, but why not? Uh, okay. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, let us uh, have uh, x and y uh, uh, as in previous way. Uh, it, it's not uh, the theorem not right now. It's uh, just uh, some uh, prerequisites. Uh, x, y uh, as uh, previous. Uh, Line uh, point random pair. Yeah. Yes. Good. As stated. Somehow can read. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, let's uh, let's consider u and v now uh, as uh, the words uh, or of uh, lengths uh, uh, k one and uh, k two n. And uh, now uh, let's also say that. Complex, uh, let's say that uh, U and V uh, are uh, uh, incompressibles uh, themselves, are incompressibles themselves. Uh, so Magorov complexity of U uh, will be K1 N plus logarithm and complexity of V will be also uh, K2 N plus some logarithms. Uh, and uh, let's uh, consider. Uh, but you, you, you don't assume that they are independent of x and y. Uh, I, I'm just uh, just now wanted to write that they are independent. Okay, so the idea is just just the idea is that except x and y are uh, are, are line and 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 point knowing, but by Alice and Bob, and then somebody comes and tosses a coin. Uh, k1 n times and k2 n times, uh, which k is some normally in the range between zero and, and some small small number like two or something like this. And then we get not just x and y, but some completely useless information uh, which isn't related to anything. So th they are all independent. The total, total complexity is the sum of complexities of, of x, y, u, and v. Good. And then you have some inequality, yeah? Uh, yes, but uh, not uh, right now. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I wanted to, right now to uh, to state that uh, x, y, u, and v are all independent. Uh, so... The pair x, y, and u, and v are independent. Uh... X and Y are, are, are line and point, so they cannot be independent. Uh, yes, yes. Yes, that's a very big mistake. Uh, where X, Y uh, plus uh, uh, complexity of uh, U uh, plus complexity of V. Plus logarithms as usual, yeah. Okay, uh, so. Uh, and uh, I think uh, now we can go to a theorem. Uh, I switched uh, slide actually. And well, I but can... it's, it's better if you have the conditions on, on uh, maybe you better to have the statement here. There is some space still here. Ah, okay. Just, just we can see everything. Uh, okay. If, uh, if the inequality is not too, too ridiculously large. Uh, so uh, I want to say that uh, for all uh, k1, uh, k2, uh, n, uh, and and uh, for all uh, uh, u, uh, and, Z, uh, probably we have uh, also. Uh, so we yes. have this all, all this x, y, u, v, and then for every z we want to to have an inequality. Yeah. 
Uh, yes. Uh, so for every z, maybe it's better to write it uh, before. Uh, for every z in omega n, uh, and for uh, x uh, y uh, u uh, v as uh, stated uh, before, uh, we have uh, such inequality. Uh, complexity of Z uh, is uh, uh, less or equal uh, to complexities of uh, Z given uh, X uh, U uh, plus uh, two complexities of uh, Z given uh, uh, Y V. So this is the, the, the version of the first theorem, yeah? Let's see. So we have the first theorem with two. Yes. Uh, it, it's uh, a, a little bit of extension of uh, the first one. And uh, uh, almost uh, the same as the second one will be uh, an extension. So you have extension of both theorem with additional u and v. Mm, yes. Yeah. And just we, maybe you can, there is some still space on, on, on the second, so, so complexity of Z. I, I guess you should be have complexity of Z given XU plus complexity of Z given XV, YV, assuming that, and then there should be some, some uh, restriction corresponding to, to, to the first alternative, yeah? Uh, or yes. I'm guessing wrong. Um, uh, excuse me, uh, you, you wanted to say uh, there is there will be condition on uh, Z uh, as uh, as uh, the as in the yeah, yeah, I guess term. assuming the complexity of Z is less than N or complexity of Z is less than something, no, just uh, yes, I, I yes, try to true. guess yes, what yes. kind of, of, uh, of statement you have. Uh, complexity of Z, uh, we want here to be uh, less than just N. Yeah. Plus, like, so both theorems have just a straightforward, not straightforward, but but direct extension, uh, which saying that u and v do not help at all. You you have all the same bound, uh, which uh, is is still true. I I don't get it, uh, Sasha. Are you claiming yeah. that this? Uh, uh, this third theorem implies also the first one? No, th this is theorem three, and this is theorem four. Three implies one, if we take wait, u, wait, and, wait. u and v zero. Where is theorem four? The four, theorem four is has the same assumption as theorem three, but has another inequality. Maybe we should uh, have written it like this. Yeah. Uh, okay, and theorem three does it hold without any inequality uh, assumption on Z? Uh, yeah, because it's a version of theorem there. one, which Nick theorem, uh, which doesn't have any assumption on Z. Okay, so theorem three implies theorem one, right? and theorem four implies theorem two if we assume that k one and k two are zero and u and v are empty. Okay. So we, 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 we actually proved two generalization, uh, generalizations, a generalization of theorem one and another and a generalization of theorem two, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe, yeah, but, maybe uh, some people may believe I... that this is obvious because if you and we don't contain any information about X and Y, how they can help at all. And but wait. Why, why do we prove uh, too strong a theorem before to prove their weak version? Why it is helpful? I don't understand it. No, no, no. We, no, of course, if may, may, no, first, if, if we can prove uh, too, too strong theorem just just uh, uh, as easy as the, as the first one, uh, this, this is, is, is the reason. But also, it's interesting to understand what the general picture there exists a stronger theorem which adds u and v ah and 
what I want to say that it's quite an obvious. You cannot say that because you and we are independent, they don't do, give anything because Z is not independent of you and V. The sure. potential we know that Z is independent. You and V are independent of X Y. Sure. But the string ah. Z, which should have some satisfy some inequality, is no more independent of 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 of, of U and Y uh -huh. and V. So, so so we are just formulating the results. We are so just no formulating more, two no. more general results, which okay. are interesting by itself because they say that that random additional information doesn't change things much. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it would be nice to have such a statement in the general form that they don't change the profile of this and that. But uh, Andre probably will say that this is not yet known. Say, say it, what, what is not uh, No, no, you can so... just say that adding some random string, uh, to, uh, an independent string to a tuple doesn't change the extended profile of this tuple. What can happen with other, uh, other, other uh, Z? No, I I don't really understand what what you are talking about, but pro probably it's not no. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so so but but I see that people people are all silent. So the question is maybe maybe we are uh, uh, we lost almost almost everyone. Uh, so Br Bruno is still still with us. Which is great. And Sasha. No, no, I'm fine. I mean, I just yeah, don't get yeah. really the point of this U and V, but okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, think, formally, I think, one think, theory implies I, the I, other I, theory. I think I can understand the point of, of U and V. Uh, if, if you, uh, just, just imagine that you want to uh, uh, formulate in terms of Komagorov complexity some problem about communication between Alice and Bob. So Alice is given a line, Bob is given a point in this line, and they want to compute something together. And then uh, uh, in, in this com uh, communication, we will have uh, different objects. We will have uh, messages sent by Alice, messages sent by Bob. Uh, uh, hopefully we will get some final re result then that they computed at the end. And uh, we may uh, ask different questions about this communication. Is it possible to compute something with a small communication complexity or something like that? And uh, uh, the, these inequalities, all these inequalities, especially them, okay, theorem one and theorem two, they can be understood as uh, inequalities that say, that provide some constraints uh, about uh, uh, possible the, messages, about the, the deterministic communications. When Alice and Bob just uh, start uh, the communication, given this X and Y and nothing more. And theorem three and four can be understood as theorems saying something, providing some constraints for uh, communication, communication uh, protocols, where Alice and Bob use uh, private random bits. U and V mm -hmm. are private random bits produced by Alice and Bob. So I imagine we want to prove something about communication complexity and say, imagine that X is given a line and Bob, Bob, Alice is given a line and Bob is given a point. And then Alice sends something. Then this string has small complexity with respect to, to, to X, we say, for the deterministic protocol. And then we can apply some inequality, maybe blah, 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 and bound some information in this and that. And yeah, but this, this kind of like argument task fails that completely. Alice and Bob should should generate something the same z but without communicating yeah 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 for some reason so for oh, some mm -hmm. reason they should send it to charlie the same z without communicating oh. if they really communicate then a natural z would be uh not only the answer but uh, the answer together with the uh, with the transcript of the protocol just for example Mm -hmm. so okay. we can say that if we take uh, the, the final answer, we add the transcript, then we can write this inequality uh, for this transcript, uh, the answer, uh, and the, the input data, all, all, all this stuff together. 
Okay, and now, now just just I want to just to ask again. So, uh, for for example, Georgi or or Misha, do do, do you uh, see what is happening and why it's happening, or it's or it's already uh, too strange? Uh, if possible, me? I would listen to communication complex uh, explanation one more time. But but the entire no complex communication is another story. But what is happening without theorem one, two, three, and four is more or less clear. Yes. Yeah, uh, you know, the, this uh, uh, discussion uh, uh, with communication complexity it 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 it, it, it were not not. A precise statement that it, 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 it was not a proof of anything. It was a kind of uh, motivation uh, uh, because uh, just uh, Sasha asked, uh, uh, "Why on earth we ask uh, uh, these strange questions? Uh, what these U and V are needed for? Uh, just why people?" If you if you don't understand the question of of, of Sasha, then you are fu fully uh, entitled not to understand the answer. It's not not needed for anything else. Yeah. Okay. So now we will prove something. I hope. Uh, yes. Uh, but not immediately. Uh, I... <laughs> okay. Uh, should uh, I should this... I switch to the next page? Yeah. Uh, yes, probably we should. Uh, yeah, uh, as far as I told. Um, uh, there, there are uh, there already was uh, so, uh, some proof or something like proof for the theorem one uh, theorem by Mushnik, but uh, so uh, uh, I, I, so uh, I'm not sure whether we should repeat it uh, uh, because the, the the main points were already said and uh, uh, my plan was just uh, to say just the main points of uh, uh, this uh, idea. No, you, you should say the, just the main thing. So for, for theorem one, we have some technique uh, which is described in the book or in this graph without loop, for, for loops and so on. And with U and V, you can still use the same technique or you are in a more delicate situation and you, you need your new technique. No, it's just uh, absolutely same technique, and uh, uh, the, the, they and w w when we compute uh, when we write these inequalities, uh, these U and V just uh, uh, will uh, destroy uh, themselves where we need them. And we yeah. Have... So if if someone uh, looks at the argument of the theorem one. You say there is a great uh, uh, high probability you can adapt it to theorem three more or less straightforward. That's what you are saying. Yes. Uh, and and you don't want to do it now, and you just want to 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 go to theorem two and four, yeah? Yes, uh, because Good. as far as I understand, uh, not uh, many people uh, 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 saw uh, using expander mixing lemma applied uh, to uh, these inequalities. Yeah, there are some people know about complexity more and some people about expanders, but it's not. Uh, okay. So so uh, what I want to start with uh, is uh, just uh, considering a, a bipartite uh, graph uh, V uh, of uh, the parts V1 and V2. Uh, part uh, V1 will uh, has uh, not very not what I wanted to write. Uh, I wanted a little bit uh, nicer. Uh, so so you, you now with, just with to you and understand, we are now proving without you and we, uh, or with already with you and we. Uh, we uh, we will prove uh, without you and we, but uh, while a proof will uh, uh, while Convent I, I will no, no, that, that's completely proof, fine. I will that's add, one I will add notes uh, uh, how it will work with uh, UNT uh, yeah. because it's uh, it, it doesn't uh, differ much. So again, you you have lines and uh, yes. you have points, yeah. 
Yes, uh, as uh, in a proof uh, yeah. by Mushnik, we have lines and points. Uh, and uh, in case of uh, uh, UNV, we have we will have the uh, points. We have uh, lines like YV, and we will have points like uh, XU uh, in uh, graph uh, graphs. Uh, in parts yeah, yeah. Uh, v1 and v2 for the general for, for the general case we add information about v to the line so we have many copies of the same line with different keys mm -hmm. yeah good oh yes and uh, let's uh, uh, con consider uh, uh, subsets uh, l and uh, r uh, 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 to, to be uh, to uh, to include uh, okay I want to say that uh, L will be subset of V1 uh, no uh, this side and uh, R will be will be subset of V2 and uh, we defined define L to be uh, wise uh, uh, which uh, uh, satisfies a Kolmogorov complexity uh, of uh, y given z uh, to be uh, uh, less than uh, some l. And uh, here we define Kolmogorov complexity of x, uh, x is uh, which Kolmogorov complexity is uh, x uh, given z uh, less than some r. Yeah, so the, the idea is, if I understand correctly, it's like this. So you, you need to show that complexity of, of Z is bounded by uh, complexity of uh, uh, Z given X and complexity of Z given Y. But it's no, no, no. more natural to, get, to, to consider... Uh, no, this is I what am. you want to prove. But uh, still, still uh, it's more important to, to consider... Uh, the, the complexity, so so if we know complexity of z given x, we also know complexity of x given z. So here we bound instead we try to to, to prove this inequality using the, the the other complexities which are somehow linearly connected with, with the original one. Uh, yes, we actually uh, will prove uh, something else and uh, then. Uh, just uh, and unpack uh, our complexities to have uh, the desired inequality. Yeah. Um, so, so, so more or less, you prove that if k of uh, of y prime z is small, and k of x prime given z is small, then what? That complexity of uh, x prime so th th there are a few pairs of this, like this, yeah? That the complexity of X prime, X, Y prime... No, 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 Sasha, no? this is misleading. We don't say that uh, these two uh, conditional complexities are small. They're just something. This something is not some uh, is not. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but if it's bounded by L and R, we, we want to show that the number of of pair X Y X X prime and Y prime is bounded. Yeah. Those that are form a line in the point. They are below. Line, the, lies on the, line. the edges that connects L or R are few in in total. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I wanted actually to define uh, define L and uh, R as complexity of uh, y given z and uh, x given z. So uh, m maybe we will think of it like this. But uh, uh, I, I will actually use that uh, L and L and R not uh, small, but uh, they are complexities of yeah, y yeah, given yeah, yeah. z. Yeah, small. I don't mean that they are very small. Just they are bounded by something. Maybe even we. Uh, yeah. Shall... So actually, actually, Muchnik argument also gives some bound. Uh, what, what he did, you, you take some like, L here, some R here, and then you see how many edges you could have in this rectangle L times R. And uh, now 
we provide some other bound, but 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 for the same number, I guess, for the number of pairs uh, uh, of edges which are uh, started from L and go to R. Yeah. Yeah. So so far it's exactly like in Muchnik's argument. We have the same L, the same R, and we count the number of edges between L and R. Yeah. But but we, we for those who who haven't seen Muchnik's argument, just note that we have complexity not Z before given Y, which is in the inequality, but why, but why given Z, and which is somehow related to this complexity. So uh, be aware that this is just a different complexity. Um, yes, and uh, probably I uh, need to explicitly write that uh, uh, just to not confuse anyone, uh, that L is uh, complex, complexity of uh, Y given Z, and uh, R is complexity of uh, X given Z. So we instead of considering specifically X and Y, you consider all strings which have not, not bigger complexity given Z. Uh, yes. Yeah. We do not need it uh, right now, but uh, I believe we should... Uh, Put it down. Uh, so, uh, and then switch to a new page so nobody sees. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, we probably uh, can uh, can write expand to mixing lemma down there. If I, I guess there is uh, some place. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, we. Uh, uh, before, I, okay, uh, we have uh, so expand the mixing lemma. We uh, stating uh, this: uh, let uh, uh, number of edges between L and R. Uh, so if we have L here and R here, uh, there will be some edges between these uh, two uh, uh, parts of graphs, and uh, we consider only uh, these uh, edges here. So this is uh, what uh, E edges L and R are uh, made for. Um, so this edges uh, minus this uh, formula, uh, D1 and D2 uh, are uh, degrees of uh, uh, degrees uh, of uh, vertices in uh, parts L and R. Uh, in, in our case, uh, they are all the same. Uh, so uh, we uh, we can uh, uh, not uh, to uh, uh, think there can be something wrong. Uh, okay, so, just uh, fi finish finish the formula and then, okay, then okay. say something about it. Okay, formula looks uh, like uh, uh, yeah uh, these uh, as far as I remember, yes. This is V1, this is V2. Uh, that's uh, the end. And uh, there is, this is, oh no, I'm run out of place. Uh, this is uh, less or equal than lambda 2 uh, square root of uh, uh, volume of L and volume of R. Uh, yes, I hope I had written it right. Yes, I did. Yes, so so oh. let, let let me check whether I remember correctly. So this the 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 this, this right part has the the this l uh, just just l times r here uh, time, times some factor. Do I remember correctly that this factor is just the density of edges? Uh, a compare in the graph compared to all possible edges. Yeah. Could you please repeat it? I... So 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 th this thing is um... the density of edges, uh, uh, a fraction of edges which actually exist compared to um, as a fraction of all possible edges. Yeah. Uh, so, Sasha, you want to reduce uh, the question to uh, some. Special case. Indeed, if it's a, a regular graph where degrees of all edges are the same, then D1 and D2 are the same. 
and the size of, of V1 and V2 are the same, then what you're saying is, uh, is, is obviously true. Then uh, this- But we uh, square the... roots. No, just square root of yeah. D1, D2 would, would be just D. No. If D1 yeah. is... and square root of V1, V2, all, would be also just on v1 but still it's not what sasha is saying it's not the fraction of edges in the uh between okay. in the set of all possible pairs yes uh, okay, okay. okay. just, just uh, oh, oh. let us uh, uh, look at this case of a regular graph so what is the density of edges uh, in this graph so we have v1 v2 pairs of vertices on the left and on the right and only d times v1 real edges so mm -hmm. the density okay. is uh, is d divided by by the volume of v mm -hmm. if if we don't assume that the graph is regular what is d1 and d2 it's a degree a d1 it's a degree uh, it, it the graph could be b regular it could be regular on the ah, left yeah yeah so so, so on the right. it, it it can have different sizes of left and right 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 yes yeah yeah and in this case we take a, a, a eigenvalue of of what uh eigenvalue of uh, adjacency matrix of uh, graph uh, b but if if it, it if it has different number of vertices of, of, of points in v1 and v2 uh what does it mean then uh it can mean a very uh different uh thing for different graphs <laughs> uh but but uh, uh in in our case uh, it shall be a square root of uh, uh uh, square root of uh, our uh, of the volume of our graph, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. lambda two is it's an eigenvalue of, of if 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 v one and v two are different size, then what is lambda two? So because the matrix adjacency matrix is not square, you can probably multiply it by transposed matrix. No, 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 Sasha, just, you, are, uh, you are asking an advanced question, but uh, you, you could ask a simple one. So let, uh, uh, let it uh, be a balanced graph where uh, v, uh, sizes of V1 and V2 are the same and D1 is equal to D2. So what is the, mm -hmm. uh, what are the, uh, the size of this matrix? Uh, if it's a really adjacency matrix of a graph as Rustam uh claimed then it is a, a matrix with two times it's, it's a matrix with, with v1 plus v2 vertices it's a square uh, uh matrix ah, so you you want to consider us not not, not as, as bipartite graph but in, 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 yeah yeah so then the, the maximal uh, uh eigenvalue would be d what d d1 which is also equals to d2 in this case the last the minimal eigenvalue would be minus d and there, there would be many eigenvalues in between plus d and minus d and lambda 2 is the second one just literally literally the second one after the maximal after after d uh-huh Yeah. Okay. So, no. Uh, so, so, so th this is this is the expander mixing lemma. In... So per perhaps it's, it's safer not not to, to to discuss the case when uh, the sizes v one and v two are different. Yeah. 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 Um... We we can actually uh, when they are different uh, and uh, in our special case we ha when we have uh, x u and uh, y v uh, we use the trick uh, trick with uh, uh, product uh, of uh, two graphs uh, but uh, but I think uh, uh, we have uh, much things uh, to be done many things to be done and uh, 
we I, I actually didn't want to go deeper so so but you say that if we want to prove it for x u and y v then we have to consider graphs of different sizes oh, but yes. then you 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 can define what is the second eigenvalue in, in some reasonable way and still have the same expander mixing lemma and it can it can be applied and does whatever you you want uh, yes exactly Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, what I want to do now is uh, just uh, uh, to make a very, uh, uh, very uh, root uh, consequence of uh, this lemma. And uh, we just open up all the modules and uh, uh, rewrite uh, uh, some on the uh, right part of this. So let's go to the next page. Okay. Let's go to the next page. Okay. Uh, here we have, uh, all we want now uh, is uh, to uh, find uh, some bounds for number of edges between L and R and uh, after this, uh, uh, go for complexity of uh, Z. Uh, so uh, what I want to write now is just uh, this, okay, maybe we do not need modules here, uh, uh, is just rewrite ex uh, uh, consequence of expanding. Ex I can't see mind. anything actually. On the page. But you ha he hasn't tried anything yet on page six. Uh, I ah, you We right have on page actually five. page five. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. So we are now interested from the upper bound for the number of edges. Uh, yes. Uh, and plus d one, d two, absolute value of L and for R uh, divided by V1, uh, V2. And uh, here we have square root and here we have square root. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, and now uh, I want uh, to have uh, two cases. Uh, uh, this, uh, 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 both of these uh, um, uh, parts of the sum are, are, uh, are, are depends on n. So uh, sometimes uh, the first uh, will be dominant and sometimes will be dominant the second. So these are two cases uh, which will lead us to uh, two parts of uh, the theorem uh, uh, which I uh, formulated before. Uh, so uh, let's uh, think now. Think now uh, that uh, so, so somehow we say that the upper bound for for the number of edges will then somehow be translated to the inequality for Kolmogorov complexity for actually the reversed complexities. Uh, but uh, th this we have to believe for for now. And but what what is, what, what what is said that there are two parts. So we, which one is bigger? And then it corresponds. It corresponds to two cases of of the state. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, the the first case uh, will be uh, when uh, this part is uh, bigger than this, and the second is when this uh, part will be uh, bigger than that part. So we will have the possibility to uh, just uh, throw out uh, the uh, 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 part which is uh, less. Uh, uh, so uh, now uh, let's consider that uh, 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 the, the, uh, that uh, let's consider that this okay uh, this part is uh, bigger than this. Uh, so uh, we shall have uh, 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 we shall have uh, non not this sign. Uh, uh, we shall have bound for the second uh, eigenvalue, and it will be greater uh, than uh, square root of d one d two absolute value of r and r. 
uh, divided by square root of v1, v2. Uh, and uh, in, in our simple version, uh, we have d1, uh, d2 uh, uh, equal uh, to some d, which is uh, actually uh, 2 to the power of n, as far as I understand and remember. Yeah. Uh, 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 square roots of, uh, uh, okay. Uh, the sizes of L and uh, L and R are almost uh, two to the power of uh, uh, L plus one and R plus one. Yeah, but for forget plus one, it, it's ridiculous now to to take care of one. Uh, yes, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and in, in the denominator, we have just two to the two n because each of the sets has to do the two endpoints, each of the parts of the graph. But wait, uh, it is not to, to the end. So uh, let's see the graph. What do you mean? The graph, graph is made by lines and points. On the previous page, can we see the graph? It is written there. Lines so, and points, yeah. Uh, what is V1? V1 are lines, right? Are lines. Now we consider a case without U and V, so are just lines. In, in uh -huh. general so cases, we have many V1, copies. V1 is of the size 2 to the air, and V2 yeah. is of 2. Okay, okay. And this is exactly what is here, because it's okay. 2 to the 2 N. And oh. uh, D1 and D2 are, are degrees, which are 2 to the N. And so we have here, we have 2 to the N. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And L and R are just arbitrary sizes for which we, we, we want the bound. And if we apply it to the set of complexity bound, but wait, L and R. And we need to divide L and R by two, right? Why? Because oh, there is square, square, root. Ah, square root. Yeah, 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 indeed. Right. Why didn't you divide? Uh, yeah, one should be careful here with you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. And uh, we we also have uh, 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 we also uh, know that uh, uh, the second taken value will be a uh, uh, squ square root of uh, the volume of the uh, no not the square root of the volume uh, it shall be two to the power of uh, and divided by two, uh, but I am not going to uh, uh, details here because it was proved uh, in somewhere else. No, no, everything was proved somewhere else. No, no it's, but, it's, but... It's, it's 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 a uh, let us say that is an exercise in in the course algebra two. No, it's, it's another way to say some some to to send. <laughs> uh, send them to the, to the devil but uh, no no but and i think that i remember what how it, how did you do this so we have a matrix we go from line to to, to point and if we uh, then take, take a square of this matrix we have to line to line or point to point and actually with almost it is very close it's it's quite explicitly uh, so it's almost the uniform. If we take a random line through to a given point and then a random point on the line, then we get a point which is almost uniformly distributed. The only difference is the original point is a bit more, a bit more probable because uh, uh, there are more ways to get to this first point, and so we get a sum of a of, of a some combination of a unit matrix and a, a matrix with the same elements for the uniform distribution. And both of them have clear, clear uh, uh, spectra, and we can compute all, this, all the values we want. Right, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, maybe I can continue. Uh, so uh, we now have uh, this inequality. Uh, and after 
uh, as we have uh, only 10 minutes, uh, we uh, need to, to uh, I, I maybe say that this is just, just technical stuff uh, to uh, get the first uh, uh, statement of uh, our theorem. Uh, or maybe we can go to, I don't know. But wait, wait, it's easy now. L, L plus R should be at most 3N, right? Right here. The L plus R is at most 3N, right? Most. No, the, the other, I think the inequality is in the, the other direction. Right, in that direction. No, L plus R is smaller than something. By, 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 smaller, by, right. Yeah. 3N, not N. Uh, yes. Why 3N? Коля, look. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, 3N. Okay. No, it's not clear. There is N over 2. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's N, N, 2N, and 3N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's correct, yeah. Okay, this is the this is the case when when uh, this is bigger. It's a main term. And if L plus R is smaller than three, and then the second is the main term. Okay, and you claim that this implies that uh, the complexity of Z is at most the sum of conditional complexities given X and Y. Yeah, and, mm. but this- No, no I, I, th I think it's, I'm afraid it's, it's, a, it's a different case, no? Uh, that a... uh, the, the, this uh, case, uh, uh, the consequence of this case uh, is that uh, uh, complexity of Z uh, is uh, greater than uh, just M. And, well, uh, right, that implies that the complexity of Z is greater than M. No, it's not directly because now, now we 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 need to 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 argue about these complexities and make a computation with which converts them to other to the other side uh, uh, to exchange the terms in the in the conditional complexity and so on. But uh, uh, we we are we have to believe that if the first term is is large, then it 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 means that complexity of Z prime is great, is big. And if the second term is large, uh, then it means that complexity of Z prime is bounded by complexity of Z prime given X and Z prime given Y. Yeah? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pro prob probably it's, it's, it's a kind of computation which, which should be done accurately because of, 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 of moving complexity in a different side, but uh, maybe we can believe that, that it will, will work. Uh, yes, I hope. <laughs> I just hope that you will believe. Yeah, that. yeah. So it's but, just, uh, just if, if we look at very high, very low resolution of your proof, the first thing that you can, you observed that you can add a U and V in, in, in Muchnik argument and also, you can replace the bound for the for the number of of, of edges and lines and play and and points uh, from which changing it from from Muchnik bound to the bound with with the expander graphs, and this will give you uh, uh, then you apply expander lemma and get get a different bound. The expander member gives a different bound, and if you do with this bound the same thing that Muchnik did with the first bound, you get another uh, better inequality, at least for some regime when uh, Z prime is simple. That's somehow the, 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 the out, outline of what you are doing, yeah? Uh, yes, yes. Um, okay, so yeah. may, maybe then someone wants uh, uh, to ask a question, uh, Sasha. Is, yeah, is it I can make a, a 
some comments. So yeah, uh, one comment is that, uh, so it's just an observation. So as I understand, so Mushnik argument just uses the fact that there is no, um, you know, basically no two points in this graph have a common neighbor, yeah. right? So it it is it is possible to show that okay so this graph of um um of this plane you know points and um has you know the this uh second diagonal value which is exactly the square root of uh the degree right uh so it can be shown that any expander with these properties have this property of Muchnik that, uh, you know, there are no rectangles like that. So, I mean, I just saying that maybe it would be, in principle, this shows that, uh, you know, the Muchnik bond can also, can also be shown by just, um, you know, this uh, eigenvalues method somehow, maybe some other inequality. So you you you, you say one point. The, 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 the eigenvalue method should be strictly stronger, and you can somehow derive the Muchnik. Yeah, I mean, what 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 one can show is that if I have an expander with the same parameters as this expander of this affine plane or something, then it has this property uh, of you know of the squares that you cannot have a cycle. Of length four, basically. No, I, you I, cannot. I understand. So imagine you want to derive Muchnik lemma from, from expander lemma, or in 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 other direction. What do you want to do? I want to derive. I mean, I'm just want to generalize uh, that Muchnik bound holds not only for this expander, this specific expander, but also for any expander with the, exactly the same parameters. If they well, if they exist. No, there, ah, there be, is, there because is, you, you say like uh, informally, this shows that somehow you can sh obtain the Muchnik bound using uh, you know linear algebraic methods also like here. Uh, but by choosing, if if you start with L and R, which which are uh, uh, too big maybe for the algebraic so, method, you should decrease them, keeping the density uh, high inside. Yeah, that's what you are saying. No, no, I mean, I'm just saying that I remember that there is a statement that, you know, this combinatorial property holds for any expander graph with the same eigenvalue. No, so, so with I, the same I, parameter. I, I, I disagree. Uh, no, the, the problem with the expanders is that uh, expander mixing lemma, at least if it is a spectral expander, the expander mixing lemma uh, gives a, a nice bound if the sets are large enough it's ex ex exactly uh, what uh, rustam was talking about we have two different regimes for large lnr and for small lnr the natural bounds appears when lnr are large and uh, uh, we we need uh, to say something else if they are small and uh, uh, muchnik's argument it applies for any L R and R, it, it applies uh, for L R and R uh, that are very small. So we this get something. Yeah, I'm, agree. I'm just saying I'm not insisting on applying, you know, specifically on you know this expander mixing lemma. I'm just saying that in principle it should be derivable just from the fact that it has uh, some eigenvalues. So I mean, in principle, it, the the point is that maybe there is some more clever ways just to obtain a bound that uh, improves upon both bounds because no, just, like the idea is that... because if you take small l and r you probably can add something inside this rectangle l times r without changing much second eigenvalue and then uh how can you get something from from taking from considering the eigenvalues Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, uh, just saying what what I already said. Another thing uh, I think that could be interesting is that okay, this this is like we we are in a regime that we have two strings of the same complexity, and then their mutual information is half their complexity, right? Yeah. Well, we we have two n and two n, so. Uh, 
maybe it, I don't know if, if, if somebody ever has done it, but uh, okay. So let's say you have two strings of complex TN and what you can say, for example, okay, for example, if the mutual information is also N, then the mutual information is extractable because it's just basically two strings that can be obtained one from another, right? S simpler, right? And, but then you can imagine, okay, imagine that I have two strings N and N and their mutual information is 0.9 N. What bounds can you obtain in this regime? Is this also inextractable or not? No, if you want case. to get, if you have, if you want to use the same technique to get a bound for for second eigenvalue, you need some some uh, nice algebraic uniform graph. And yeah, so for example, there exists this Ramanujan graphs for that by Lubotsky, Philip, and Sarnak on something that uh, uh, they uh, have it, a it, lot it's, of it's... parameters and the square and the uh, you know the. Uh, the eigenvalue there is also square root of the degree, but with coefficient two, and then also with some parameters, they also have this property that they don't this combinatorial Muchnik property. And I guess the problem is that whether we can get something in non-extractability when the bow when the mutual information is higher than the half of the complexities of the strings, and maybe. I'm not sure whether Lubotsky, Philip, and Sarnak can give something there. Maybe no, they let, can, let but me I mean, I don't remember the specific, parameters. Let, let me ask more specific question. Imagine we have in, in five-dimensional space, we have two-dimensional sub subspaces and three-dimensional subspaces. And uh, yeah. they are, they are uh, connected by an edge if one is inside another. No, maybe not five, but if we take some dimensions and take some something in the, close to the middle dimension, then we can have a, a lot of common information because there are much more uh, big subspaces than than the, the way to extend them a bit. And so you are question, answering my question already, or no? No, I am trying. I am I rephrasing know. your question for Andre. So if we take this graph. No, 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 no. I don't think that has any connection to my question because, what you just said. Because can I repeat my question? I can I, I can make just a formal mathematical question. Yeah. Does there exist a pair of non uh, strings of complexity, both complexity n with mutual information 0 0.6 n with non extractable mutual information? And yes. I'm asking whether it's known or whether. So you're, as, you're saying yes. Yeah, I'm saying yes. yes and I remember that Andre. Did prove this in some way, and the way is you consider you consider the the, the subspaces of different dimensions, not points and lines, but bigger dimension, and in this way you can somehow t regulate uh, what kind how much mutual information you have, and still you have some kind of non extractability Okay, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, I, I can I can say what what uh, uh, I think is known first. Uh, if you uh, uh, ask this specific question, can we exactly or almost exactly uh, uh, extract the mutual information uh, for x and y with uh, of length n and with mutual information of size 0.6 n or 0.9 n or 0.99 n, then uh, we know a couple of different constructions or maybe top three different constructions of, uh, uh, of such pairs where the mutual information is right. as you want to, and it cannot be materialized. And there are some diff different combinatorial uh, ways to, to explain uh, why it cannot be materialized. But if you want something more than uh, non-extractability of the mutual information, if you want to write some inequalities for the, uh, Z, X, and Y, like Rus Rustam did for uh, lines and points, uh, then uh, perhaps uh, we don't have, a, at least we, we don't have a, uh, some good answers. We can write some ad hoc uh, ugly inequalities with uh, terribly huge coefficients. Mm, but I don't think that we are a, a kind of a final answer with optimal coefficients in these inequalities. Uh-huh.
And not an answer to your question, just a comment about your comment. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, the construction of Lebowski, Phillips and Sarnaki is what we need, because uh, they, uh, in some sense, uh, they did more because they wanted to, to get a constant degree of a graph, and it was extremely difficult. Uh, but uh, yeah. uh, 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 at, the, uh, at the same time, it's uh, it, it's 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 weaker than what we uh, okay. It's it's it's, it's not it doesn't give w what we need. We want uh, the degree to be pretty large. Maybe. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's I mean, it can be non-constant in their construction. It means just I remember there are two prime numbers. They can be arbitrarily, you know, co-prime prime numbers and then you can choose okay. them whatever you okay. want and then there maybe, are some parameters maybe maybe, maybe. I, I i'm not re re ready to answer maybe maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe i mean maybe i remember that there's i mean yeah and then this second mega value is at most two square root of the degree which is slightly worse than here but i mean yeah well maybe if it it's if it's just big o square root of degree we're fine it's it's okay. It's, we don't, don't care yeah, the only it. problem is that maybe uh, you know I don't remember exactly. Can we get? So we need indeed that the degree is large with respect to the size of the graph to get I guess beyond zero point five n. So it has to be larger than the square root of the. Yeah, indeed, indeed, it's, it's, uh, it, it would be interesting to look at this construction. Uh, it just I don't understand what is uh, the possible uh, relation between the degree and the size or and the number of vertices. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not ready to, to to give an answer for this. But, but, but uh, I, I, uh, I still think that for such a regime where degree is pretty large. It uh, might be easier to find uh, a graph with a um, small lambda two without uh, this heavy weapon like uh, Lebotsky, Phillips, and Sarnak. Okay, but for mm. graph. Okay, sorry. Maybe. Just, just yeah. like, like the example that we're talking about, uh, there's lines and the points, or I don't know, or orthogonal. Uh, uh, directions uh, in a three-dimensional space, or um, I don't know, in the space of finite dimension. It's pretty easy uh, to uh, compute uh, uh, this, uh, the spectrum of such a graph, uh, and uh, cert certainly it's it's in infinitely easier than uh, uh, explicit constructions of uh, expanders with a constant degree. Well, I mean, yeah. they already did all the work. You can just uh, state the use the yeah, formulation. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but if how, how do you do this? If if you have this k k dimensional spaces and uh, l dimensional subspaces, if you just take a square, uh, you don't get a uniform distribution. So what? How do you do this? You take a bigger power of or what? Okay, okay, kind of an answer. You you take a bigger power, yeah. <laughs> you take a, a, a bigger part, a constant power of a graph, and uh, you see that uh, this power uh, gives a, a a graph which is pretty close to. Uh, to uh, to the graph of all this uniform distribution, and uh, this implies some some bounds. Uh, but you can ex exactly compute the spectrum, or or just you you have a bound how close it is. I did I didn't uh, try to compute exactly the spectrum for this case, mm -hmm. but maybe maybe it's 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 doable. And this can be found in your PhD thesis, I guess. Yeah. In, in my PhD thesis, there is no spectral arguments at all. You can have all bounds of combinatorial. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in, any other questions, comments, and so on?
Okay, and I, I guess for for for, for the for the next meeting, we uh, just I I always had a, a dream to understand uh, what is Lampel-Ziff uh, compression and why it's universal for any for any block frequencies. And always I read the try to read the paper of Lampel and Ziff and cannot understand anything. But finally, recently, Sasha Kazachinsky explained me everything very easily. So I guess it's a very nice, nice explanation. And if you want to know what is Lempel and Ziff, or if you think you already know it, uh, it's even better because then we can discuss whether it's how, what, what is the connection between the standard argument and this one. Uh, may, may, th this, this, this will be covered in the next. If 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 there are not, no other plans for the for the next Monday, we can agree that it, it will be such. Okay, Lempelziv is fine. Lempelziv made easy. Made he easy. just waited for, for for the moment when uh, both authors of this algorithm pa passed away. Now you start to discuss a bit. <laughs> no, but it's, it's not me, it's Sasha, who who kept the secret for so long time. So. Okay, so Sasha, maybe you will send an announcement. I can do it also. Yeah, but yeah. Maybe. Um... But I guess, I mean, yeah, okay. I'll send the, the announcement. Yeah. And also, just there, there is something about Lempel Ziv and, and Markov chains, if you uh, before also can explain what known what is known about this, it will be also. Very interesting, but I don't know whether it can be done or cannot be done, or what, what is happening there. Just a, a, a humble request. Well, I mean, if you can point out to something that you want to understand, because no, I have there, no there is something. If you have a mark of chain, it has some kind of of intrinsic entropy. How much bit it emits one per 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 per, 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 per byte, and once I heard that Lampel-Ziff somehow achieved the best possible. A compression for 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 Markov chains or what I don't know whether it's how it works or whether it makes sense or what is known about this. I just remember that once I heard something like this, but never understood what it means exactly. So mm. if by chance you can explain, this would be nice, but no obligation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other talks for 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 other days? Does maybe some someone wants to to give a talk? But uh, should should we stop the recording uh, to to encourage people? Uh, to... We cannot stop the recording because it's recorded automatically. Okay. So, so we will have to just cut the recording and delete those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that we can. Yeah. So any 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 people want wanting to uh, give a talk. Maybe Bruno what wants about... to talk, tell something easy, preferably. Uh, what about Hirahara? No, uh, I didn't read it yet. For, for Hirahara, we should wait for for uh, Milovanov, who who promised to tell us something. But... Uh, oh, weeks, there, no? there is one thing which I, I heard that the explanations of Ivan Titov about Barmpalia's argument that. All, all the sequences which converge to a random uh, lower semi-computable random real converge exactly with the same frequency. But still, I cannot understand the argument. And um, so, so I planned it for some time, but now it's not ready at all. OK, so anybody else? You can you can also send send letters if you okay so then 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 we close our uh, not close we just go go out and it when everyone goes out the meeting will be closed yeah if if you uh, have some questions to to Rusta maybe you can formulate your request. And of course, not for the next week, but the maybe a few weeks later, he could answer these questions as well. No, the, the question is, what else can you inter 
equally interesting or more interesting you can tell us no i, th I think that the, a good question would be uh, what interesting uh, uh, so you can prove for us or what, what interesting could, could be no you, true, it's, it's but not necessarily your prove own it. proof if you <laughs> just have some interesting th to thing to tell proved by somebody else it's also okay just something exciting and easy that, that there is a chance to understand, to explain it for dummies. Okay, so not not yet. Good. So uh, and then then we stop the official. Part. Okay, thank you everyone for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.